um legítimo empreendedor serial. An entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur, he is the founding of the great, greatest platform. The Our Crowd got more than one billion dollars for startups and funds for venture capture. On the stage, one of the main investors from Israel, John Medved. Welcome. Thank you so much. Hola, São Paulo. It's nice to be here. Todo bien. Uh, shalom. I am going to take you on a little bit of a trip. We're going to go a little bit across the ocean to go visit my homeland of Israel. We're going to go on a little bit of a trip to the future and look at a whole host of new technologies that are changing all of our lives. And we're going to talk about how you can profit from both of these trips, how you can actually join as an investor into the until now closed asset class of venture capital. And then we're going to hopefully answer some of your questions. So here we go. Look, global VC investment as at an all-time high. Uh, basically, last year was a little bit better than this year because this year China came down very hard, but it's still over $200 billion a year. VC investment is going through the roof. It has never been a better time to be an entrepreneur. If any of you were sitting in your chair and thinking, you know, I got this cool idea. I'd like to make a startup, but I don't know if this is the right time or I should wait. Trust me, now, this is the time. It's easier to raise money, it's easier to build a company, you want to do it now. Now it turns out that one country continues to just power ahead in terms of venture capital investment, and that's Israel. Here's a chart that shows you what's going on literally year after year. <clears throat> we started our crowd in 2013, we were very lucky. And that business now, our collective venture capital business has gone from a little over $2 billion to this year, it will be actually close to $8 billion. We were $4 billion in the first half, and we just did over $2.2 billion in the third quarter. So we're going to beat the $8 billion. Now, just to give you an idea of how that compares, let's say, let's take a country of similar size to Israel. How about LATAM, the continent of Latin America? All 600 plus million of you. How many dollars do you think were invested this past year in venture capital in LATAM? The answer is about $2 billion. So it's pretty fair, right? Israel with 9 million people, 8 billion, and LATAM, 2 billion. I'm sorry. It doesn't make sense. This should like be getting some laughter or something. It's very bizarre how much venture capital is being invested in the Israeli market. The Israel is now considered, according to the World Economic Forum, as the leading innovative country in the world. In the old days, I, I wanted to make this point. I would have to use slideware that came from the Israeli embassy or consulate or some Zionist organization now it's the guys from Davos, they're doing the work for us. And they've now decided that Israel is the most innovative country in the world. Turns out that our country is known as the startup nation. Now, we used to sell companies pretty cheaply. You could buy an Israeli company for 50 million bucks, 100 million, maybe 200 million. But now you got to come with a lot more dinero or plata, or I don't know what they say here in Brazil. Yo hablo poquito español, pero no habla portuñol. Uh, and the bottom line is that today, Israeli companies are being sold for billions of dollars. Mobileye, which is the world leader in collision avoidance, was bought for 15 billion by Intel. Mellanox, which does data center chips, was bought for almost 7 billion by Nvidia. Even Pepsi-Cola got in the act spending over $3 billion to buy SodaStream so we can stop polluting the world with plastic bottles, okay, which is a really important thing. That deserves some applause. Uh, but anyway, tough audience. We'll work on it. <laughs> uh, 
what all of this M&A or merger and acquisition activity does is it drives multinational corporations to set up shop in Israel. So today, literally every two weeks, there's a new multinational setting up a permanent facility. Last year, 23 new multinationals came. There are now 450. And what's interesting is that even multinationals from Latin America are getting in the act. And there's a Mexican company who, frankly, I only heard about a couple of years ago, maybe you know the company, called Grupo Bimbo. You know Grupo Bimbo? Big food company. They're setting up in Israel. People like Grupo Fleury here are partnering with our crowd. So now you're going from the realm of Intel and Facebook and Google down to a whole crew of new multinationals who understand that innovation is not nice to have, Innovation is a must-have. I don't care what business you are in. You might be in real estate, you might be in agriculture, you might be in medicine, or you might be in transportation. But your business is going to be fundamentally transformed over the next decade. People are going to lose their jobs, not in millions, but in hundreds of millions of jobs worldwide. The disruption which is coming is real, and you have to preempt it. How do you preempt it? You embrace innovation. You invest in it. You partner with it. And you find places where it grows so that you can access it. And that's what's happening with the multinational corporations. Now, it turns out that the most disruptive technology of all is artificial intelligence. If you are a entrepreneur who has decided to start their company today, like I gave you advice, and your pitch does not include an AI or a machine learning angle, what must you do? Get a new pitch. If you don't have AI and artificial intelligence in your startup, get a new startup because everything is going to be changed by this data revolution, everything. And if you don't know a data scientist, then find one. Get your kids to learn it quickly. Don't have them become radiologists, okay? Radiologists are going to be disrupted by the AI which is coming, okay? And it's coming to every industry. So if you look at where are these AI startups being built? Number one in the world is the US. And battling for number two are two countries of roughly the same size, China and Israel. And this is not per capita, this is absolute number of AI startups. There are as many AI startups in Israel as in all of China. And that should give you an idea of how dense that society is. This is what it looks like. Too many companies to put on one page. Anybody who would like my slides, by the way, please feel free to send me an email to john at ourcrowd.com and I'll send you the slides. So you can take pictures or send me the email. But it's not just AI, it's digital health. We are all going to be going through a total revolution in medicine as a result of the most important medical device in the world. What is that most important medical device? Your mobile phone. Okay, that is the most important medical device. It's going to change everything that's already working today. So if you look at digital health, Israel is active. If you look at ag tech, where the farms of the past are now going to become data enabled on multiple levels, 400 ag tech startups in Israel. Automobiles, mobility, it's not just Mobileye. There are now 600 mobility startups in the country. You can't put them on a slide. These are just some of the leaders. FinTech, we all know that banks are probably the most, let's say, endangered species in many cases because everybody's coming after a bank. And I don't care whether it's Google or Facebook, everybody wants part of that business. And they're getting it because it's all going online. 
but it's also Industry 4.0, or it is cybersecurity. Everyone knows Israel's good at cybersecurity. 700 startups there. In food tech, lots of startups. In travel tech, and that's it. By the way, one of the biggest industries in Israel, the guys who make these slides of the ecosystems. Okay, there are probably about another 40 of them, which I didn't include here. But this gives you an idea of what's going on in this little country. So the question you have to ask yourself is, wait a minute, why? Why Israel? Why Israel with nine million people has all of this investment, innovation, breadth, science? What the heck is going on in Israel? Now we could spend days talking about this. There are lots of ways of looking at it. You can look at it from a historical standpoint. You can look at it from the Bible. You can look at it a lot of ways, but I have one simple way that I look at it, which is that our people in Israel have a long tradition of turning curses into blessings, to turn a malediction into a benediction. It's a little bit religious, but let's go through it. We have a curse, we don't have water. You guys in Brazil have a lot of water, thank God. We have none. But it's not a curse, guys. Guess what, it's a blessing. You know what happened? We became masters of water. We invented drip irrigation. We are the leading country in the world for desalination. And today, we recycle 85% of our water. If you come to Israel and eat these sweet little cherry tomatoes, you do not want to know where the water came from because it wasn't used to grow them the first time. Okay, it's all recycled. The second most recycling country in the world is Spain with 15%. 85% Israel, 15% Spain. Another curse is that our kids go to the army. They are alive, they're not dead. Okay, these are just tired soldiers because our kids all have to go to the army and I'll tell you, it's a curse as a parent. When you know your kid is in the army, you don't hear from him, you worry, you feel sort of inadequate that your children have to defend you. They have to spend three to five years of their life serving the country. Is that a curse? No, it's a blessing. Because it teaches our kids to not be narcissistic. It's not all about me. It's about serving a greater good. It's about being mission-driven. It's about working with teams and working with cool technology, turning a curse into a blessing. Another curse is that we are a tiny little country. We have nine million people, there's no market. It's not an interesting market for anybody. However, it's not like Brazil where you've got 200 million people, it's a great market. But this curse is a blessing because it teaches us that we must build global leaders. We build companies like SodaStream who go after how do you stop plastic bottles. Companies like Wix who become the leading website building company in the world. Checkpoint who invented the firewall. Companies like Mobileye who lead in the mobility space. We go and do battle with people in the global stage. Another curse is that not everybody likes us, right? That's a reality. Some countries, in fact, speak openly about trying to wipe the map of Israel, that Israel should cease to exist. That's a curse, believe me, especially when that country or countries are trying to develop nuclear weapons. Keep some of us up at night. However, actually, it's a weird blessing. Why is it a blessing? Because it teaches us there, there we go. Somebody's speaking here. I don't know if that means yes or no, but we'll, we'll try to figure it out. The, <laughs> the, the blessing is that we are taught to choose life and to value life. When we drink in our homes, we don't say bottoms up. We don't say cheers, we say something which is l'chaim, it means to life. We realize that life is the most precious thing. Many of us believe in an afterlife, but 
this life is precious. There's one big problem. We're all going to die. It's bad news, but it's true. We're all going to die. The question is, what are we going to do while we're here? Are we going to be afraid? Are we going to worry about existential threats? No way. We're going to write a symphony. We're going to create a TV show. We're going to start a startup. We're going to develop science for Nobel Prizes. You're going to take risk. Because what's the worst thing that can happen? You fail. Big deal. Failure is part of the process. Right? If two people come to me, these two people up in the front row, and they're pitching me as a venture capitalist, and they've both got pretty equal startups, except the young woman is a loser. You lost your first company. You failed. And the gentleman next to him, next to her, is a first timer. I think most people in the room would say, well, don't invest in the loser. Go with the, the, new, the new guy, right? Wrong. Statistically, the person who has tried and failed will make a better investment every single time. Because failure is simply part of it. There are certain societies where they're so afraid of failing, they won't take the risk. That's not us. And we are focused on creating life. So, for example, Israel has today the highest birth rate in the OECD. Literally more kids, you come to our country, all you see is bambini. Only children. The, the children run the place. And that's, look, I'm a grandparent, I've got nine grandkids, thank God. And this is what we're about. Another curse is that we have no natural resources. We're a tiny speck. This is a real map. This map has not been doctored. I was showing this map to a group of Japanese businessmen, and a group in the front row started laughing and sort of chuckling with each other. And finally, it became so obvious that they were laughing about something, I said, well, what's, what's so funny? And they were embarrassed. I said, come on, what's so funny? Why are you laughing at this slide? And one of them said, I never thought that Japan was huge before. Because you look at Israel, look at Japan, and you see that Japan compared to Israel is huge. We are a tiny little speck of a country. That's a curse, right? Wrong. Because what it does is it focuses you not on natural resources, but on human resources. Educate your kids. That's what the whole theme is here. Dare to learn the power of knowledge. Graduate them. Create Nobel Prize winners. Create people like Yuval Harari. Okay, that's what you have to do if you want to build a country which has no natural resources, it only has humans, and spend money on R&D, on research and development. Today, Israel spends for civilian R&D a higher proportion of its GDP than any other country in the planet. So a little bit about what I do. I run the world's largest equity crowdfunding platform. It's a platform that allows you to get involved in venture capital like the big boys and the big girls, to invest alongside the big names, to get into big companies, and to get treated the same way even if you're not a billionaire. Because the reality of venture capital today, and I'll show you with an example here. We have maybe 1,000 or 2,000, maybe more than 2,000 people sitting in this audience. Many of you are investors. I think many of you probably have resources. Is there anyone here in this audience who is willing to admit that they have been lucky enough to invest in the Sequoia Capital Venture Capital Fund. Please raise your hand. Is there a single hand? One hand? No. And by the way, I ask this question everywhere. There are no hands. Because the number of people who get a chance to be invested in venture capital, literally worldwide, are hundreds of people. Not thousands, not tens of thousands, handful. It's an oligarchy. And it's not fair. Why isn't it fair? Because these guys 
they get a chance to invest in a company like Uber at $5 million valuation. When do the rest of us get a chance to invest in Uber? At $50 billion valuation, when it goes public. You can't, we, no, it's impossible. Take another example. You can look at, in the old days, we used to have companies like Microsoft, like Amazon, like Intel, that went public early, that gave the investor a chance to participate in the upside. If you had bought Microsoft stock when it went public and held, do you know how much money you made by today? Over a thousand times your money. Same with Amazon, same with many of them. But today the companies wait so long to go public, they wait until they're worth 10 billion, 20 billion, 50 billion, it's unfair. So we set up our crowd to give you and millions of people like you around the world the chance to get into venture capital. We started with Israel, and we started with the country that we know and the companies that we know, and now we're expanding around the world and proud to announce that we just have set up our first office here in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and we're going to be working aggressively on funding Brazilian startups and making investments globally available to the Brazilian investor class. Today we have actually $1.3 billion under management. There are almost 40,000 of us around the world who are part of our platform, and we've invested in 200 companies. We are the most active investor in venture capital in Israel. And that's pretty cool, so this democratic platform has now become the leading investor in one of the leading venture capital markets in the world. And our model includes the ability to invest in a single deal, like a Beyond Meat, which is a company which is changing the way that we eat and giving us, I, I shouldn't say anything bad about meat in Brazil, right? I might get in trouble here. But there's a company in the States called Beyond Meat which is doing really well, and it's helping people include more vegetable protein in their diet. So Bill Gates happens to be an investor in Beyond Meat. And what we allowed our people to do is to invest in the same deal with Bill Gates at the same price with the same kind of stock for $10,000. That's our minimum investment. And that's democratic. We also have funds that give you the ability to invest in a venture capital fund. In addition to having 40,000 individuals, we have a bunch of institutions involved. The way it works is we look at hundreds of deals every month. We choose the best deals, and then we decide to invest. We set the terms, we negotiate term sheets, we do thorough due diligence, and then we open it after we've invested our money at the same terms, we put our own money to work in each and every one of these deals, and then we open it to the entire crowd, which includes individuals, and includes family offices, and includes institutions. The difference between us and everybody else is that we are a democratic platform. We're open, we let everybody come in, you have to be a minimum uh, either salary or asset test, depending upon which country, consult your accountant. We have huge scale. We're diversified in every area of technology. We have a proven track record with great results, 35 exits so far, and our performance is top rank. The new IPO is the FPO. The FPO is the final private offering how to get people like we did into Beyond Meat before the IPO. And that's what we're working on. This is, by the way, an article from Bloomberg just a couple of weeks ago. Another article from Institutional Investor is about the head of the SEC who says the following. He says, if growth opportunities have shifted to a substantial extent into private markets and ordinary investors don't have access to them, that's not good, said the chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission in the U.S. He now says that we have to open this up. He's obviously been reading our materials, 
and this is important, we've got a lot of tailwind behind us. At any given time, you can choose literally two dozen different opportunities. Companies like Edgy Bees, who are doing drones, Barcode Diagnostics, which is doing personalized chemotherapy, Hicon, which is doing digital packaging, Sciata Labs, which is doing statistics and analytics for writing cyber insurance, Ride Vision, which is doing Mobileye for motorcycles. I was driving here and saw these motorcycles zipping between cars. They, these are people who have a sign on them that says, I'm an organ donor in training. Okay, it's really scary. They need this product. The chances of somebody dying in a motorcycle accident are 26 times higher than a person in a car accident. So you need a mobile eye collision avoidance system. Companies like Intuition Robotics who make robots for the elderly. We'll talk about more of these companies and I'll show you some videos towards the end of my talk. Our portfolio is very broad. It includes cybersecurity and energy. It includes drones and food tech. It includes e-commerce and agriculture. It's literally every area of technology and there are 19 different funds that you can choose from. We back our companies not with small money. When people think of crowdfunding, they often think of small checks, a couple of hundred thousand dollars. We are writing checks, as you can see here, that are $10 million, $15 million, because there are a lot of us. And if you take a $10,000 here, and a $50,000 there, and a $250,000 in the back, all of a sudden you get some very big numbers indeed. And we are extremely proud of our exits. The fact that the companies who are buying our companies are the leading companies in the world. And whether it's Samsung, or Canon, or Uber, we have a lot of great partners, Intel and others, who are buying our crowd companies. Our median check size is going up year to year. And now, our, literally, the median check size we write from the aggregated crowd is now three and a half million dollars. We now have almost 50 different companies in our portfolio who are valued over a hundred million dollars. So these aren't little small companies. These are companies of size and importance that are being backed democratically by the crowd. And as I mentioned before, these are examples of some of our exits. Wave, who was acquired just recently for $400 million in the small business accounting by H&R Block. Magisto, acquired for $170 million by Vimeo. Invertex, which did foot selfies. Foot selfies, they allow you to take a picture of your feet. Who wants to buy that company? Nike, of course, so they can make you a custom tennis shoe that fits well, okay? That's what we're doing with the exits at the moment. Now, in addition to companies being bought, we have IPOs. We were very proud of the fact that Beyond Meat went public and that one of our companies, Jump, which did bicycle sharing, was bought by Uber and Uber went public. And so even though the Uber shares are coming off in the last couple of days, if you haven't noticed, I notice, I look at it, we're very happy because we got in much earlier. We didn't get in at the IPO. We got in not even in the FPO. We got in before that because we seeded this bike company, and that's the whole idea. We didn't get in at the $5 million valuation. Okay, that would be cool. Okay, because go to 5 to 50 billion, that's a big number. But we got in early so our people could make money and break into this oligarchy. And this is just exits from this year, so there are a lot of those. We've just announced a major deal with an investment banking company in the U.S. called Stiefel, who are now going to distribute our products to their million clients. And their CEO said, we're excited to be associated with an innovative platform that is empowering individual investors. And we're very proud of this partnership. They're going to be curating individual deals, offering funds, and providing investment banking services to our platform. We're signing a deal now with NOAA to bring our VC investments to Europe. 
And we have a whole series of global banking partners, including leading financial institutions in places like Thailand and Australia, Korea, Singapore, and the United States. And we have a portfolio of funds which are quite, quite impressive. We won't spend a lot of time on them. Great numbers, great performance, and a portfolio index of 50 companies. The minimum investment in funds is $50,000. I'm going to go a little bit quicker. This is an example of what the crowd can do. This company, Kartika, is developing a new kind of uh, mobile eye kind of application. And there were four investors in the first round of funding. The four investors included three rather huge giant companies. Continental, which is one of the biggest auto supply chain companies in the world from Germany. Toyota, which is the world's largest car manufacturer, and BMW. And they invited one, one venture capital firm to join them in this funding. And look who they invited, our crowd. Because we add value. It's not just that we're democratic in access, but once we invest, our crowd goes to work and acts as a force multiplier to help these companies get built. So we're focusing on food tech incubation, all kinds of things. I won't talk about that. What I do want to talk about is what we're doing around the world, and in particular in Latin America. We now have 12 offices around the world, and we're most proud of our new Sao Paulo office, led by Rodrigo Montero and backed by Natalia and by Thomas. Okay, these are great people. They're going to be working. Please, I don't know, Natalia and Thomas, are you here in the audience? Yep, find him, talk to him. Okay, there he is, he's, it's hard to see him. Go stand up again. Okay, Natalia is a better, little better looking, he's not bad looking. Where's Natalia, is she here? I know Rodrigo's getting ready for a dinner tonight. But please talk to our people and interact with our team. We just had our own conference, it wasn't quite HSM, but in September we had 800 people here in Sao Paulo with 20 startups doing incredible work. And this is a picture from that first event. And we'll be coming back every year bringing cool startups to this community because we're making a long-term commitment to Sao Paulo and to Brazil. Now, I mentioned before the match between Latam and Israel. It turns out that, as I said before, about $2 billion invested in Latam Last year, 6.4 billion. This year, 8 billion in Israel. And you know what the populations are. There is a great potential match here. But what's interesting is that now Latam is developing a whole bunch of really great companies. Wonderful unicorns, which we want to invest in. You know these companies better than I do. But I want to meet them when they're early, not when they're late. I want to get involved and invest in them for the benefit of the overall crowd around the world. And Israel and Brazil are really starting to become very, very good allies and friends. Our trade is going up about 20% a year for the last two years and will continue to grow. It's over a billion dollars now. And there's tremendous opportunity because Israel's got ag tech. You have the biggest agriculture sector in the world. Israel is developing digital health, and you have a need to bring it to the various parts of the country that need health care. There's so much opportunity where all of our companies should be coming and working here with you in Brazil. We're very proud that Grupo Fleury and Sabine have joined us in the digital health area, both investing in our digital health fund called Our Crowd Cure, and this is the first of many, many strategic collaborations we're going to have with Brazilian companies. And our companies are working throughout Latin America. We have companies like Tyrannus who are working on crop yields in Brazil and Argentina. I should have got rid of the Argentina part here, I know. Uh, Sayo, which is doing cocoa bean and coffee bean analysis. Biocatch, which for Itao is doing authentication. Thetaray, which is fighting financial hackers for Santander. These are just some of the companies in our portfolio who are working in Latin America. 
And most importantly, I want you to come and join us for a wonderful festival of technology called the R Crowd Summit, February 13th. Please join us. Here's a little picture or video of what it's like from last year. society as a whole, it's very good that we have crazy optimists. I am convinced that opportunity exists in my country, your country, and every country in the world, and it is our responsibility as creators to showcase this stuff, and your responsibility as investors to invest in this stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Avram Baniel, age 100. My father says, even today, I operate under the assumption that I am eternal until somebody proves me wrong. We'll see you next year. I'm now going to show you a little quick, rapid view into the future. These are companies that you're going to hear lots about going forward. I'm going to start with a lot of medical companies. Alpha Tau is using a new radiation therapy where you shoot a radioactive dart into a solid tumor, and in their first 51 human patients, they blew this tumor completely apart. It disappeared within three days. This is an extraordinary company. They're doing now clinical trials all over the world with skin cancer, lung cancer, even pancreatic cancer. Check that company out. Barcode Diagnostics is literally encapsulating in nanomaterial chemotherapy and then barcoding it. They inject you with three or four potential candidates. They then do a biopsy three days afterwards to see what works. So rather than shooting in the dark thinking, I think you need this kind of chemo, they know, they have data. And today about 30 or 40 percent of the chemo that is prescribed to people doesn't work because it's not been personalized for the patient. BOL Pharma is a cannabis company. This is the leading cannabis company in Israel. Israel has legalized medical cannabis export. They're going to actually be growing in the next season in Portugal, maybe someday here in Brazil. BrainQ is doing remarkable stuff to essentially rehabilitate neural and spinal difficulties. There are people who are fully spine severed who are now not only experiencing sensation but movement. Okay, as a result of this electrical intervention and they're working with Google. They're one of the three digital health companies that Google has selected to partner with. DreamMed is building an artificial pancreas. Literally, this is a pancreas which runs on AI and automatically regulates your insulin level. Elminda is giving you a baseline of how your brain works so as, God forbid, you get Alzheimer's or you get older, you now know what's happening. Because today we don't really know what's happening other than we see the behavior. We don't have that data. And this is a data company who is actually measuring this. HIL is doing proton beam therapy, which if you know about anti-cancer therapy, radiation, unless you're using Alpha Tau, often destroys surrounding tissue. Proton beams are like little lasers of radiation that hit the tumor by itself. The problem is they require a football field. Literally, many proton beam centers are the size of this room. They're so big that they didn't have one until just recently in Manhattan. They cost a quarter billion dollars. This is an Israeli company who's using a laser to do the excitation, hitting a nano target, and it will work on a desktop. Watch HIL. Insight Tech will show you a video in a second. This is a company using focused ultrasound.
to stop Parkinson's tremor. You will see it in a second. MetaWare is using big data to prevent your doctor or hospital from killing you with the wrong prescription. Would you believe that at the Harvard Medical School, about 5% of the prescriptions are wrong? I guarantee you that your hospitals have a similar or worse percentage of mistakes in prescription. This is software which saves lives. It literally stops prescriptions of Viagra for a two-year-old or birth control pills for an 80-year-old. Those are the kinds of things they've discovered in their trials. Memic is a new robotic surgery device which has unbelievable degrees of freedom and will literally change the way we do robotic surgery. Nanomedic is spraying a fake skin layer, which is artificial skin on wounds or on burns, so you don't have to treat people with bandages all the time. This is such an incredible device. Please go to our site if you can and look at the video of this product. Pulm One is desktop pulmonary function. Lung disease is going crazy today. And we need the ability to test lung disease because of all of the pollution that we're breathing all the time. This is a company called RealView, which does medical holograms. It literally puts in front of the surgeon a 3D hologram so they can see not a generic heart, but your heart. Rewalk allows paraplegics to walk again. By the way, all of these companies are on our crowd. Every single one I showed you, these are just a sample of our medical companies that we're backing as a group, and we're proud of it. And this company, all I can say is you'll be hearing a lot about this one, <coughs> because they literally know how to take a pinprick of blood and do a blood test. Now we heard about another company that said they could do it. It was the greatest fraud of all time, Theranos. This is not a fraud. And you will soon be hearing about how this company is doing. Psyche is the first medical delivery instrument for medical cannabis. Medical cannabis is a little bit of a joke because you basically say, hey granny, smoke two joints and tell me how you feel in the morning. Okay, she feels good, but it wasn't very medical, okay? This is an accurate dosage meter connected and actually using this in clinical trials around the world. Zebra Medical is using AI to enhance radiologists, but eventually we know that this pattern matching will be done better by the AI. And it's an extraordinary company uh, pioneering this area. Now let's talk about some non-medical companies. Skytran is literally building a solution which you need here in Sao Paulo. I spent two hours coming from the airport to my hotel this morning. It was torture. This will take me there in minutes above the road. It's one-tenth the price of light rail. Look for Skytran. Intuition Robotics is building robots for helping the elderly. And I'm going to show you a little video from an expert named Stephen Colbert. Because seniors love technology. <laughs> the new LEQ will help the elderly text, FaceTime, and do other online activities as shown in their promotional video. LEQ reminds me to take my meds, arranges rides for me. She even reminds me of all my appointments. Mary, don't forget bridge with the Golden Girls at 1 p.m. Would you like to practice? Oh. I don't need to practice. I didn't catch that. Do you want to play bridge or not? Oh, fine. I said it's time for bridge practice. <laughs> don't upset me, Mary. It would be a shame if someone mixed up your meds. So this is no real laughing matter because this AI is so strong that Toyota and other big car manufacturers are now going to use it for your ability to talk to your connected car in the future. It's also working amazingly with elderly who need the companionship. 
and Verit is the first company in the world who can clean the air inside our buildings. It literally cleans carbon dioxide and formaldehyde. Instead of having to flush all of this air outside, which costs energy, it cleans the air using technology developed in the space station and submarines. Up and Ride is a company that allows, you saw it on our video of the summit, people who are quadriplegics to get up. Here's an example. It's Dr. Amit Gofer, a Technion graduate and entrepreneur. The Up and Ride brings quadriplegics from a sitting position to an upright position, both indoors and outdoors. Recharged overnight, it can negotiate a variety of surfaces, sidewalks and slopes, responding automatically to obstacles and hazards. Being able to stand and move is extremely important for people with psychological health, not only the physical one, and the he dignity the of the person, self-esteem. Uh, After an accident left him quadriplegic, at first, Gofer put his ingenuity into developing the Rewalk, a revolutionary system that enables paraplegics to walk, climb stairs, and even participate in marathons. When I started with the Rewalk Robotics device, I was wondering. CropX is doing sensors which measure water and uh, fertilizer in farms. Check this out. These sensors give you the simplest, smartest, and best adaptive irrigation solution. It's completely do-it-yourself. You'll be up and running in no time. The revolutionary spiral design allows for easy installation and perfect results. It's irrigation with a difference. CropX combines advanced cloud technology with affordable sensors in the ground. Unique CropX technology scans your field and analyzes its different zones. The CropX mobile app directs you to the exact point in your field to place the sensor in the soil. Simply scan the QR code and the sensor automatically connects to the system, starts gathering data and sending it to the cloud. Now that your fields are connected online, expect to receive texts from them. Your fields now have a voice. So, Dad, what's your field saying today? No need to water today. No need to water today. SIO is a tiny mass spectrometer which can tell you what is the protein content of your soybeans, whether your corn or maize needs to be picked, how much sugar content is there in your tomato, you guys are the biggest dog in agriculture. There is nobody bigger than Brazil. The ag tech companies here that are collecting data, CropX, SIO, Tyrannus, we need partners. Please write to me, to John at our crowd if you're interested. We believe in impact investing, in the ability to actually create money and do good at the same time. People believe that they're opposite. Right? That you can't actually do something good and make money. We think that's wrong. We think that's absolutely wrong. And in fact, our last year's summit was all about startups making a global impact. Listen to Sir Ronald Cohen, who is the father of impact investments, talk about it. And if I were 26 and coming into the venture industry today, I would be a, an impact venture investor. Because that's where the investor money is going to flow and that's where the talent is going to flow and that's where the opportunities are going to flow. Now it has been thought for a long time that there has to be a trade-off between making money and doing good. The slogan of the impact revolution is do good, do well. You can do both at the same time. And today our companies are making an impact in agriculture, in healthcare, in the environment, in climate change, and we're making money by doing that. Our companies are making history and making news. And we would love to join with you to solve these 17 SDGs which the UN has put together. And finally, I want to leave you with one end video that shows the impact of a company that changes the way that we deal with Parkinson's disease. And it's called Insight Tech. Watch this video. 
<laughs> this is what Parkinson's disease does to Kimberly Splatter. Uncontrolled movements, shaking and wobbling. It got to the point where I was having difficulty getting dressed. I have a grandson. I couldn't like snap his onesies. I was at a wedding recently and I couldn't dance with my dad. It was sad. Now, doctors at the University of Maryland Medical Center are experimenting with a brand new treatment, something that's never been done before. It's called MRI guided ultrasound. It's been known for a long time that if you make lesions in certain parts of the brain, you can eliminate some of the uh, symptoms. And that's exactly what this treatment does, except there's no cutting and no surgery. Kimberly underwent this treatment less than a week ago. She says she had to shave her head, but the procedure didn't hurt. The only feeling is intense heat. The results, though, were immediate. She was able to walk. It was just absolutely the most incredible thing in the world. And when we met Kimberly this morning, there was even more emotion because she was able to accomplish something else, running, a favorite hobby that she hasn't been able to do for years. It's turned back the clock for me. You know, I, I have a new lease on life. I can do things that I want to do. I, it's a blessing. Listen to what Kimberly says. It's a blessing. You turn curses into blessings. You make money and you have social impact. We all get together and we change the world. Thank you, Sao Paulo. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. Amazing. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you, my friends. It was awesome. Pessoal. Guys, I don't know about you, I know the day was intense for me. We had an amazing morning, the end of the afternoon was wonderful, so I'd like to invite you all for our happy hour. I'm thirsty, happy hour with oak beer, we will have music, and I see you all tomorrow. See you all.